the readings today, I think are apropos for Christians today. Because what is it that we believe? The thing that separates us from everybody else is the resurrection. It's easy to believe that Jesus was a miracle worker. Just you read the stuff, all right? That he was punished for being a so-called insurrectionist, and he was crucified. A tragedy, especially having his mother there. Tragedy. Historians can accept that. But what changes it for us is our belief in the resurrection. It doesn't end in death. Everybody suffers. Everybody has tragedies in their lives. And as was Benjamin Franklin said, there's only two sure things in life, death and taxes, all right? So it comes to us all. But Christians should be living in hope. And I think that's the, change, the challenge for us in terms of the world we live in. We can so, get so caught up in the things of the world that we forget the things of heaven, the things of God that see us through, in trusting in him. I mean, just think of the, what Jesus went through. Again, for us as Christians, we believe that he's the son of God, but he not only suffered and died, but he rose from the dead. He didn't want to go through the crucifixion. Think of his, his, his prayer at the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he died. I mean, he's just in agony, knowing what's awaiting him in a few hours, knowing that he's also dying to save us from our sins. Suffering and death by itself doesn't save us from our sins. The resurrection does. Because Christ proved to us without a shadow of a doubt that he is the Son of God. Father, take the, let this cup pass by me, but not my will, but yours. How often have we said that in our own prayers in terms of suffering or uh, somebody who's got cancer, Lord, Lord, help this person be cured, but help me to accept what happens. Walk with me. And he does, and that's with everything in life. Because if it wasn't for that, we would have no hope. I certainly still wouldn't be here as a pastor. Who needs it? <laughs> you know, it isn't easy in this day and age. I mean, I'm not going to go into the, the past of the church, the glory days of the church, they say. Well, they weren't always glorious. You know, there's always been suffering and pain. But what sees us through it is Jesus Christ. The gospel kind of, it, it's a reminder, Jesus is going, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. What is the, kingdom, what is the good news? How much God loves us and how much he walks with us on our journey of life because he's calling us to himself. Now, if Jesus was a fraud, if he was a phony, if he was a shyster, why would these people be following him? Forget about the 12. But what about all these others <laughs> who provided for him out of their resources? What was it that Jesus did for them? Yes, he cured them of evil spirits and illnesses. But what was it that Jesus did here to transform their lives so that they would follow him to the ends of the world. That's not necessarily something you and I have, but it is something that God has. So today as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us ask God to, to flood our minds and hearts. Well, forget the mind. Let us flood our hearts with his love and mercy that we can carry forth in a world today that's so hostile to us, realizing that God is walking with us because he loves us, cares for us, 
and is calling us to himself.